I made a portable car lighter and the cool thing about it is that everyone watching this video can make it as well. The case is 3D printed and I gathered all of the parts from AliExpress. The lighter can be held in your hand, mounted under the desk, making it stationary or you could even design a buckle to hold it on your belt. The lighter socket is universal so you can use any lighter you want. To charge it you simply connect a USB-C cable to the back and wait for the light to turn off. Inside you'll find 3 lithium-ion batteries with all necessary electricity. Electronics. The whole battery pack is made to be a separate unit, making it easy to change the size and shape of the whole enclosure. On the front is the car lighter socket, and on the back is the USB-C receptacle for charging, and next to it is the light indicator. Long time ago, a friend showed me the houseplant car lighter, and being quote-unquote engineers, we always judge such expensive products because we know how much we could actually make them for. All of the parts I'm going to mention are linked down below, and by purchasing something through my link, you pay the same price, but I get a small commission which helps me a lot. The most difficult part to source was the car lighter socket. It took me a lot of time to get the right one. For the socket to hold the lighter in place, there are two springs, and not all sockets have them. When the lighter and the socket are are at the room temperature, the springs are in the normal position, and when you press the lighter down, they hold it in place. When the lighter heats up, the springs expand and release the lighter from the socket. While testing this, I noticed that the lighters draw a lot of current, more than 7 amps. And by the way, if you want to see how I build this power supply, the link is down below. If I was to power the lighter with some kind of a power supply, the supply would have to be beefy, and the wires going to the lighter would have to be huge, so I chose to go with batteries. These cells can put a lot of current and I can charge them slowly which any USB cable could handle without a problem. Car lighters usually work on 12 volts so I went with 3 cells in series which will give me a voltage range of 9 to 12.6 volts. I didn't want to solder the cells together because I wanted them to be replaceable so I got a triple battery holder. Cells connected in series can catch on fire if they are not monitored and balanced so to do that I got a battery management system or BMS for short that's going to make sure that all 3 cells are at the same voltage while charging. The board has an under voltage protection as well, which will disconnect the whole battery when the cells are empty. To charge the cells, I got a 3S lithium ion charging board. It will charge the cells with 1 amp of current and this time there is no quick charge or power delivery sadly. To make the charger work, you connect pure 5 volts to its input, so this time just 2 wires will be needed. To extend the USB-C connector, I got a panel mount receptacle and the data lines won't be needed here. If you wanted to use a power delivery charger, it wouldn't work because of the missing communication lines. But if you really wanted to, you could fix that problem by adding some kind of a trigger board to trigger 5V PD. To know when the batteries are charged, I will extend the LED from the charger board and mount it to the back with this plastic LED holder. A fuse like this can be also added from the battery to the socket so that it pops if something shorts out. I measured 8 amps max for the lighter, so I'll use a 10 amp fuse. For the enclosure I tried making it as small as possible, but these cells are huge and so is the lighter socket, so this is the smallest I could make it. I could have used some smaller cells to shrink it even more, but I have a lot of 18650s and I want to use them. The whole enclosure consists of 8 parts and it took some inspiration from the lab bench power supply. The lighter will heat up and PLA would deform at such temperatures, so I had to print it out with PETG filament. The only two rolls of PETG I had were black and yellow, so this will be the main colors. Front and back panels screw everything together and the flexible sleeves hide the seam lines between the shells. The battery module is a separate unit and I created these channels to route the wires making them protected and easier to connect. Everything is held together with M3 bolts and 5mm M3 inserts which will be linked down below as well as the enclosure. If you don't have a way of printing the parts yourself but still want to make this project you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to print them for you. Starting the build, the first thing to do was to clean the 3D printed parts. The parts can sometimes be messy, especially when the filament is a bit old. Then the inserts got installed and I used 14 of them in total. 8 of them were used to secure the front and back panels, 4 are used to assemble the battery module and 2 inserts were used to secure the battery module to the enclosure. The next thing I wanted to do is to assemble the battery module. Everything is held together with 4 M3 screws. I used some super glue to temporarily hold the battery holder to the top part so it doesn't slide around. 
I flipped the top part and started connecting the BMS. I wanted to pre the pads on the BMS, but I was out of solder. And that's first time in years. I wanted to buy some so I can finish this video over the weekend, but the only two stores that have the solder wire I need were closed and I was left with the general hardware store. They had this one, which was too thick and expensive, but... Pre-thinning the pads and connecting the BMS to the cells. This was really easy because of those wire channels I made. I used some super glue to temporarily hold the BMS board to the printed parts so it doesn't move around. Zero volt pad on the BMS connects to the battery minus, 4.2 volt pad is the first cell, 8.4 volts is the second cell and the 12.6 volt pad needs to be connected to the positive terminal of the battery. One thick wire needs to be connected between the BMS zero volt pad and the minus of the whole battery pack. On the BMS there are two breakout points and the minus one is going to be connected to the lighter while the plus wire can be connected directly from the battery pack. That way the BMS board can kill the battery when it's empty. A fuse needs to be connected in series so I split the minus wire and connected it there. The charger board got secured with super glue again and the output of the charger connects to the BMS plus and minus pads. Now I just needed to connect the cells in series and the balance leads to the end points. Then everything got screwed together and the fuse was connected. I connected the USB USB-C panel mount connector to the input of the charger and the only thing left was to extend the charge LED. The battery module was screwed to the enclosure and I connected the LED that's going to be mounted to the back. And at this point I just needed to connect the lighter socket. I secured it to the front panel with some epoxy and soldered the wires. And here you can see how everything looks together. The charging works. I got a USB tester connected and it was showing about 1 amp at 5 volts, so that's great. And to test the lighter, I pressed on it and when it was hot, it popped out, as it should. Now I just needed to assemble the whole enclosure, starting with the top shell and securing everything together with the front and back plates and sleeves. And that's it, the lighter is done. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I love making these projects and the videos encourage me to make them more often. First of all, I wanted to thank you for the support on the last video. It got a lot of attention in a small period of time and that I wasn't expecting. Next, if you'd like to see these projects more often, buying through my links can really add up and help me to get the parts for the next projects. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the Patreon I mentioned in the last video. I started posting there and currently for $1 a month you can get early access to the videos you see behind the scenes stuff and even some ideas for the upcoming projects. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video leave me a like and if you liked it very much you can even subscribe and if you didn't